All right, so in this video, we are going to look at the side to side angle triangle. Um, last year in geometry, uh, you looked at uh, the side angle side, side side side, all the different patterns that guarantee a unique triangle. And in this video, we're going to look at side side angle when you're given two sides and an exclusive angle, the angle not between the two sides that you were given. If you remember back to geometry, your teacher probably said to you that side-side angle does not guarantee a unique triangle, which is totally true. It does not guarantee it, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, right? There are several different scenarios where a side-side angle does guarantee a unique triangle. One of those cases is a uh, hypotenuse like HL, uh, which you did look at in uh, geometry. Uh, but we're going to look at all possible situations, right? What is the length of each side? What is the size of the angle? And then in doing that, we are going to be able to determine if there is, in fact, a unique triangle. And if there's not, how many are there? All right. After we uh, talk about the different scenarios, we'll do some examples, and then we'll be, we'll be in and out. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's look at every single possible scenario of a side-side angle triangle. So in a side-side angle triangle, you are given um, a side, a second side, and then uh, if you think about a normal triangle, which angle is uh, not included in between these? Um, either A or B. All right, so you're either given angle A or angle B. I'm going to go ahead and just arbitrarily choose A. If I'd given you C, angle C, that is the angle in between. So if I gave you A, if I gave you B, the angle in between them is angle C. All right, so I'm not giving you angle C. I'm giving you an exclusive angle not an inclusive all right so i've given you a side a side and an exclusive angle let me go ahead and get rid of this triangle here on the right all right so i think the best way to look at um, the possibilities is to choose an angle larger than 90. let's like break this down to acute versus obtuse triangles so let's go ahead and say the measure of angle A is larger than or equal to 90 degrees. And then let's see what triangles appear when A is bigger than 90. And then we'll, we'll make A less than 90 and look at the triangles that appear there. And in doing that, we will look at all possibilities. So the measure of angle A in the following cases is larger than 90. All right, so given that the measure of angle A is, is obtuse, um, what are the other possibilities? So we're kind of branching out here. If A is bigger than 90, um, what's the relationship between um, side A and side B? Well, there's two possibilities. Uh, side B is larger than side A, or uh, side A is larger than side B. These are the two possibilities of uh, given measurements. Or actually, we're missing one. Let's go ahead and say what happens when A and B are also equal. So we'll include that in our second uh, scenario. But we are looking at all possible triangles given that the measure of angle A is obtuse and um, the uh, measure of side A and side B are varying. So let's go ahead and look at that. All right, so in this first example, let's give ourselves an obtuse angle A. It's kind of arbitrary here. We're just looking at um, the scenario. So we have the uh, angle A right here. Right. And we have that B is larger than A. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is side C. We don't know how long it is. Right. But um, I have these uh, three possible sides, C. Uh, which two of these are going to be B? All right. A is opposite side A. So side A is over here somewhere. And side B is right here. Right? And we have the fact that B is larger than A. So I'm going to go ahead and cement B by bolding it. Right? It's no longer a dotted line. It, we now know what it is. Right? And we know that A is less than B. Right? So A is going to be some segment that is um, a smaller length than uh, B. Right? B is greater than A in this example. Right? So with that said, um, can this triangle be complete? And the, uh, the answer is no, because um, this angle right here is cemented, right? It's not going anywhere. It must be this. We are given me the measure of angle A. We are given B, and we are given uh, side length A. 
Right? And this side, because it's shorter than B, is never going to get to side C. Right? No matter how much you swing this back and forth, the, this, this side length will never complete this triangle. So what does that mean? If you are given a triangle with an obtuse angle and two sides exclusive of that angle, right? the angle is not between the two sides, right? then we have no possible triangle. It is impossible to complete this triangle given um, arbitrary measurements where uh, the angle is arbitrarily larger than 90 and the exclusive sides have the relationship where the adjacent side is larger than the opposite side. So there are no possible triangles in this first example. All right? So your teacher last year would be totally right. right? There are no possibilities. But let's look at when A, the opposite side, is larger than the adjacent side B. So let's give ourselves that arbitrary obtuse angle, A, right? This thing's not going anywhere. This angle is what it is. Um, side C is over here. We don't know how long it is, but it must be going in this direction, right? And now we have that the opposite side is larger than B. So if I'm cementing B down, right? But A is larger than B, right? Now that A is larger than B, as long as it's just a little bit larger, right? A will make it down to side C, right? And it will make it down to side C in a specific spot, right? Because we are given a side larger than A, we can complete this triangle unlike this purple example when B is larger than A. When A is larger than B, we can complete the triangle and there is one unique triangle. All right, when A is larger than B, there is exactly one unique triangle. Ooh, I've made a mistake. All right, if A, all right, if A is equal to B, then these two sides are the same. A is gonna swing in towards this angle A, and it's going to line up with B. There will not be a triangle. So I've actually made a mistake here, All right? If you're taking notes, go ahead and fix this. Hopefully you have a pencil, because there's two reasons why you should always carry a pencil. Yeah, you're gonna make mistakes and that's okay, but I'm also going to make mistakes and that's okay. Right? There is no possible triangle if B and A are equal and A is obtuse, right? If A is obtuse, and B is larger than or equal to A, no possible triangle. But if A is larger than B, there is one triangle that side A can swing in and meet this, this third side C, um, thus uh, still having that cemented angle A, uh, the cemented angle B and the cemented, uh, sorry, side B and side A, and uh, C is going to be determined. So there's one unique triangle, um, but there are no possible triangles here in this pur purple example. All right, that's for when uh, the uh, triangle is larger than or equal to 90. Let's go ahead and uh, look at when the angle is uh, acute. All right, so we are given uh, some side A, some side B, and um, the exclusive angle A. Once again, I could pick B, but just for the purposes of drawing a picture, I'm picking angle A. All right, these are what we're given. All right, this is the side-side angle triangle pattern. All right, but what are the possibilities when the measure of angle A is less than 90? All right, we're going to have a, a few more possibilities here, actually. So uh, what happens when the angle is less than 90? So I want to start this uh, page by looking at what happens when A is larger than or equal to B. All right, the side A is larger than or equal to side B. So we have this arbitrary angle um, that is now acute, right? Angle A is um, acute here, right? It is cemented though. It is some value, some real number, and we cannot change it, right? We also know that the side opposite A is larger than the side adjacent to A. So this is going to be B and it is some length, right? 
A is going to be larger than B. Right? So A being larger than B guarantees that it's going to get all the way down here to C at some point. Oh, sorry. There we go. It's going to get down here. So we are given that B is some length. We're given that A is some length that is larger than B. And this uh, leg can swing back and forth and it's going to meet this, arb this, this unknown side C at some unique point. Okay? So if you're given a, tr a triangle pattern uh, where the angle is outside the two sides, that angle is acute and the side opposite the angle, the acute angle, is larger than the adjacent side. You have one unique triangle, right? So once again, last year, if you were asked, is this triangle unique given these three measurements, right? It may have or may have not been, right? If the angle was acute that you were given and the opposite side was larger than the adjacent side, there would have, in fact, been one unique triangle. However, when B is l uh, greater than A, um, different things happen. So let's look at this. There's actually three scenarios. So, Scenario number one. And by the way, I encourage you to draw this picture out and kind of determine it for yourself. But um, scenario number one, we're going to have some arbitrary acute angle A. Okay. Um, this cannot be changed. This is given. And we have some side B adjacent to that angle. Uh, such that B is larger than A. So now we have this, this dangling side here. Right? We have this dangling side. Right? So we need to figure out when is this triangle unique? When does it exist? When does it not exist? Um, when are there maybe more than one triangle that might exist? Um, and uh, that's what we're going to answer here. So um, the first situation we should look at is... Um, what is this length? Why might this length right here be really important to us? Right? What is the height of this triangle? All right, a little bit of right triangle trigonometry will solve this for us. We uh, don't know H, uh, but we do know B, and we do know angle A. So the sine of angle A is equal to opposite H over hypotenuse B. And if I do a little uh, bit of algebra, I determine that H is B sine A, right? So I'm going to switch up the colors a little bit. Okay, this right here, H, is B sine A. All right, and that number matters significantly, B sine A, because if A, if A is less than B sine A, then this dangling side here will never reach this dotted line down here. And there will be no triangles exist. But, you know, I'm going to use this exact same triangle several times. If scenario two Right? If A is equal to B sine angle A, then now this blue uh, side right here, this dangling side, is going to make its way right down to this point right here. The new side A is going to meet that triangle right at that right angle. So if A is equal to B sine A, then one triangle exists. And you actually know this example already. You learned it last year. 
it is HL hypotenuse leg. All right, so you've actually seen this one before. Right? If the side opposite the angle you're given is equal to B sine A, then you have one triangle. It is a right triangle, and we have existence. All right, but let's look at the final example. All right, scenario three. What if A is larger than B sine A? I encourage you to think about it for a second. But let's say that I'm going to go ahead and label this um, side right here red. What if B is larger? Sorry, what if A, excuse me, what if A is larger? Right, if A is larger, then there's actually two possible triangles, right? Because A could land right here, or it could swing and land right over here. Right? This and this are equal. We have an equilateral, uh, sorry, not equilateral. Um, we have equal sides. Uh, this third side isn't necessarily the same. We have an isosceles triangle here, and we actually have two possible triangles. Right? If A is larger than B sine A, then two triangles exist all right triangle number one is this really kind of a, sl a sliver of a triangle right it's we have angle a right we have this small side here and then we have this side b and we have this side a where a is larger than b sine a and the other triangle we have is this larger one We have this entirely long side. We have this side right here, B. We have side A. And we have um, angle A down here. So notice that these two triangles have the same A, the same B, and the same A, side A, that is. right. But one is an acute triangle and one is an obtuse triangle. Right? So if A is larger than B sine A, if A is larger than the height of the triangle, this leg can swing in and meet the side C at a different point, but still maintain the given measurements. So this is the third scenario. Scenario one was when A was just a tiny little dangling leg, and uh, it, there was no way it was going to get to this side C right here. Right? when A is less than B sine A. Right? Scenario two was when A was equal to B sine A and it, it swung down and met the, uh, the dotted line, the side C, at this exact spot, this right angle spot. Right? But the third scenario, when there's two, and this is arguably the most annoying because there's possibilities. The, the, all the other examples, there was either zero or one. That's wonderful. Now we're in a world where there's two. Right, this, the, these two triangles have the same uh, angle A, side A, and side B, but are different. But these are the only two. There are not three, there are not four, there are not an infinite amount of triangles. There are a unique amount of triangles. Uh, sorry, not unique. There are a finite amount of triangles. So given side-side angle, we can, just by looking at the magnitudes of each measurement, know how many triangles there are. First, we look at that angle. Is it obtuse or is it acute? Then we look at the relationship between the two sides given, and that will determine if there's zero, one, or two triangles. All right. I have this diagram I can show you right here. Here are all the possibilities we have when the angle is larger than or equal to 90 and when the angle is less than 90, and we have each scenario where A and B's relationship is changing. Here you can see that when the angle is larger than 90, uh, the things we care about are when A is less than B or when A is greater than B. If A is less than or equal to B, we can never, com we can never complete that triangle. We can never make it down to that dotted line. So we have no 
solution. We have no triangles that exist with these measurements. But if A is larger than B, the side opposite the angle given, then we can make it down to that dotted line. Here, if we're given an angle less than 90, uh, there are four different solutions. Um, if A is larger than B, we're down here at the bottom where we have one solution. Right, that, that side A goes and hits the dotted line, but it can't swing in because A is larger than B. Right? But if we make A a little bit smaller, then we can start to swing. Right? If A is smaller than B, then we can swing. But once we get too small, once A is equal to B sine A, we can't swing anymore. We are a, a right triangle. We are hypotenuse leg. We are one unique triangle. But then once A gets a little, like, arbitrarily smaller, like at all smaller, we are then a, a dangling side, and we will never get to that dotted line, so there are no solutions. So these are the scenarios that a uh, side-side angle triangle, the side-side angle triangle pattern can take on. Before I begin my first example, now would be a good time to take a break, to uh, pause the uh, video, go and grab a glass of water, go take, you know, play some video games for a second, and then come back. Um, but uh, without further ado, here is my first example. So, uh, I'm going to give you an angle. 103 degrees. This, you should already be thinking, right? How many triangles um, are possible? Go ahead and pause it and just think about that answer. It's obtuse. So, there's either no triangles or one triangle. It all depends on the sides I give you. Right? The side opposite the angle that I gave you is going to be 61. And the side adjacent to the angle that I give you is going to be 46. All right, these are in units, um, whatever, inches, centimeters, it doesn't matter. All right, units. What I want you to do is I want you to solve for all possible triangles. So there's either 0, 1, or 2, but because this is obtuse, there is either 0 or 1. The 2 is when the angle is acute. The uh, given angle is acute, right? And the side opposite, uh, the angle that is given is larger than the adjacent side. So we are in this example, right? Here's our side C, right? Here's our angle A, all right? And whoops, I need to rewind because that angle A is obtuse. And this is 103 degrees, right? Side B is... I'm going to go a little bit further. 46 units. And side A is long enough to reach this unknown side C. So we have one unique triangle. And our goal is to find the rest of these measurements. So the question is, what is uh, angle B? What is angle C? And what is side C? Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to do it in the color orange. And we have an angle and side pair. And that will always be the case with a side-side angle. You will always have a given angle and its um, opposite side. So I can go ahead and, with all that said, use the law of sines. So 61 over sine of 103 is equal to, it's kind of up to you. Let's go ahead and grab... Um, side C. So, um, sorry, I can't, I can't, it's not, I can't use C. My bad. Uh, let's go ahead and grab angle B. Yeah, Cause we know side B. So if I solve this, do, 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 I'm going to get sine B is equal to 46 sine 103 all over 61, which is 0. 735, that's of course rounded to the closest one thousandth place, 735, and then so the arc sine of 0 0.735 is going to give us the measure of angle B, which is 47.288 units. Okay, so we have that, cool. And then so since we have now measure of angle B, 47.288, we can go ahead and want to grab angle C 
because we have two of the three angles. So that's going to be 180 minus the sum of the other two angles. Which is 180 minus the sum of 103 and 47.288. 29.712. 29.712. Degrees. <laughs> Writing degrees there actually reminded me that this is not units. Well, it is units. The unit is degrees. Sorry. And finally, now that I have angle C, 29.712, I can use the uh, law of sines to get the final side length, C, so C is going to be equal to, using the law of sines, 61 sine of 29.712. And I want to be clear that I am saving the number in my calculator. And then using that number, uh, because rounding can lead to error, and I'm trying to minimize my error as I go. So 61 sine 29.712, but really the number in the calculator, divided by sine of 103, which ends up being 31.029. Cool. And uh, we can look at this triangle and make sure it makes sense. Uh, look, angle A, 103, is the largest angle in this triangle. So it should be opposite the largest side. And it is. 61 is larger than 46 and 31.029. All right. Uh, 47 is the second largest angle. So it should be uh, across from the second largest side, 46. And then 29 is the smallest. It should be opposite. So the uh, 31. So this triangle does make sense. So I'm feeling like it's right. I could do more checking. But um, I'm, pr I'm pretty happy with how I've done here. Um, and uh, using techniques like that can also help you check your answer. Um, but there are other ways to check your answer too, like verifying the uh, other formulas. But that is one example using the law of sines to solve a side-side uh, angle triangle. Let's look at um, another example. All right, this one will be a little bit more pleasant, I think. I'm going to give you the angle 41 degrees all right, so we're dealing with acute now. That's that, that's going to change things up. You can start to think about the possibilities, right? And the side opposite this angle is going to be 2, and the side adjacent is going to be 7. Start to think about what this means in terms of a triangle. In fact, I always encourage everyone to draw a little picture before they begin, right? So we have this side C that we don't know. I, always, I also always draw the triangle in this orientation. I find it to be the easiest. The side I don't know anything about, I'm going to put um, uh, horizontal. And then this angle is acute. So I do know that this is an acute angle, 47 degrees. Oh, sorry, 41 degrees. You know, you know me. Well, I want it to be 47, but it's 41. Um, and then uh, this is going to be 7. And then this dangling side is going to be 2. All right, so buff, so you might automatically know the answer here, but before we do anything, let's just calculate the height of this triangle. All right, the height of this triangle is going to be B sine A. All right, adjacent side 7 sine the angle um, 41, which is 4.592. 4.592. Right, this height here is 4.592 and this little dangling side is 2 all right so if this dangles completely vertical it will not make it to this dotted line c all right so with that said we're done no solution and i like to put a little smiley face because these are the best they're just so quick all right i got two more examples for you if uh, you need to take a break, go ahead and do that. Come back later. No need to do this whole uh, lesson in one sitting. That's the beauty of the video. Uh, but here's uh, number three. And um, I'm actually going to leave this one for you guys to do. I'm just going to get it started for you. I'm, I want to do the last one in full, though. All right, so we do have two more examples. Right? 
uh, the angle that I give you. I'm going to change up the letters for you. The angle that I give you is 30 degrees, acute. This is either going to be 0, 1, or 2. Right? The side that um, is opposite this angle, right, C and C, is going to be 14. And the side adjacent to this angle, I'm going to call this one A, is going to be 10. All right? So if you don't want to think about it, draw a picture. All right? This horizontal side is going to be B now because that's the side I have not given you. Right? And the angle that I'm giving you is acute. It's 30. All right? And the side adjacent to it is going to be A. So we've got angle A over here. We've got side A over here, which is 10. Right. And then uh, the final side is larger than A. It's 14. All righty. Right, so this side here is um, 14. It's a little bit bigger than the, the side adjacent to the angle. All right, so what does this mean? Right. The side opposite is larger than the side adjacent, and the angle is acute. This is, let me find the uh, scenario, right here. One unique triangle. Right? The angle is acute, but this side is so big that it can't swing in and make two sides. Right? This side cannot swing in and make a second triangle. So there's only one triangle here, one unique triangle here. I'll leave this one for you guys to solve if you so choose. But I wanted to get you this far so that you have a jumping off point. Um, there will definitely be some examples of a um, acute angle given and a larger opposite side so that there is one unique triangle um, in the problem set that goes with this lesson. Right? But what I want to do is I want to focus our attention on my fourth example. Right? The beast. The worst I mean, maybe, maybe depending on how you look at it, the best. But in my opinion, the worst scenario when there are two triangles. Um, and what does that mean? It means the angle that I give you is acute. In this case, it's going to be 36 degrees. And the uh, angle opposite the angle that's given is um, smaller than the side adjacent, but not so small that there's one or zero. Right, we're going to have two possible triangles here. Draw a picture. Here's our 36 degree angle, C. And then A is going to be 17. And C, the side opposite 36, is going to be just smaller than 17, but bigger then B sine A, or in this case, sorry, let me rewind, A sine C. C is bigger than A sine C. So what does that mean? We're going to have two triangles. We're going to have one side over here. This is bigger than the height, um, but smaller than the uh, other given side. And we're going to have a triangle over here. Okay, so we're going to have, you know, I'm going to change the colors up on us. We're going to have this green triangle here. And let's go with a light blue here. So we have this blue triangle and this green triangle. And what does that mean? Let's just figure out both. But it's not too bad because if you notice, this side and this side are congruent by definition. It's just the same side swung uh, back and forth to meet this side C. Okay? So what does that mean? This triangle right here is isosceles. Right? So uh, this angle right here is equal to this angle right here. All right? That's the isosceles triangle theorem. Right? The base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. 
and this angle right here and this obtuse angle right here um, are supplementary. So if I find out what this angle is, I know this one. Or if I find out what this angle is, I know the acute one over here. So it's not that bad. You just got to do it. So with that said, I'm going to go to a new page. And I'm going to have my green triangle here. It's going to be an obtuse triangle with a side 17, 16, and angle 36. And then I'm going to have an acute triangle with uh, the exact same measurements. 16, 17, and 36. And I want to just solve, go ahead and solve both of these. So let's go ahead and use the law of sines. I have um, side 16 and the sine of 36. And let's go ahead and solve for this obtuse angle, right? So uh, that's going to be 17 over sine. Uh, what what angle? I should give all these uh, letter names. So C, um, C, okay, yeah, C, which makes this uh, side C. This is A, which makes this side A. And this is angle B up here. Same thing over here. Let me go ahead and add that. C, A, B, and uh, ooh, I want to add uh, side B. All right, so we're down here. Uh, we have um, angle, uh, what is this? This is not solving for angle B, it's solving for angle A. After doing a little bit of um, arithmetic, a little bit of algebra, we're going to get that A is equal to the arc sine of, do a little bit of cross multiplication, 17 sine 36 over 16, which is then going to be equal to 38.647. Degrees, right? And that is not this A. This A is obtuse. This A up here is obtuse, right? But what does that mean? Let me go back to this picture over here, right? This angle is 38.647, right? Which makes this angle 38.6, sorry, 6. Four seven, which makes this angle 180 minus 38.647, which is 141.353 degrees. So let me jump back here. This is not the answer, right? This is the answer for this angle right here. Let me go ahead and write that down. 38.647. All right, this angle up here is 141.353, right? So we actually want um, 180 minus A, which is 141.353. Let me go ahead and add a 180 minus here as well. All right, so in doing the work for one of them, we got the answer for the other one over here. Um, and guess what? Um, arc sine outputs things between zero, uh, sorry, negative 90 and 90 degrees. So when you do this process, you're always going to get the acute angle, the angle in the larger area triangle, this large blue triangle. All right? By doing arc sine, you're always going to get this angle over here. And then you just have to subtract from 180. You find its supplement for this angle over here. And then from there, we can just do more law of sines and cosines to get the other sides and the other angles. So I'll leave that to you guys, um, but I'll write the answers here. The answers are, um, for this triangle over here, the, uh, the uh, smaller area triangle, we have, I'm going to go ahead and write that in green, A equals 17, uh, B equals 1.2. 1.257 and 
and C, of course, equals 16. Uh, angle A, or the measure of angle A, is equal to 141.353. Right, the measure of angle B is equal to, uh, really small, 2.647. And the measure of angle C is equal to 36, as given, right? And then over here, um, in solving the uh, larger area triangle, the blue triangle, the one with the smaller angles, right? The acute triangle, right? All synonymous names. We have, of course, A is equal to 17 and C is equal to 16. But in this example, right, B is a lot larger than it is in the green triangle. It is going to be 26.249. And with that said, the measure of angle A is going to be, I'm kind of running out of room here, sorry, a 38.647, we knew that. The measure of angle B is going to be 105.3. 5, 3. And the measure of angle C is going to be as given 36 degrees. Alrighty, so there you have it. That is a side side angle triangle where two triangles exist. And we're tasked with finding both triangles. All right, but the triangles are very closely related because of this red isosceles triangle. So take advantage of that. Right. There you have it. There um, is pretty much everything I need to say about side, side, angle, triangles that uh, um, I want to share with you. I want you guys to figure out the rest um, in doing examples. Uh, and we'll talk about it uh, later in our face-to-face uh, uh, -face meeting. So um, without dragging this on any longer, I will close this up. There you have it. Side, side, angle. Triangles.